Welcome everyone to this RMS Cloud OTA Insight joint webinar. My name is Stephen Martin. I'm the Chief Sales Officer of RMS Cloud, and I'm joined on this webinar by OTA Insights Head of Asia Pacific, Amit Peshawaria. Hi, everyone. Uh, today, we're going to show you how the certified integration between RMS Cloud and OTA Insights can provide your hotel with business intelligence that helps you make better decisions around pricing. Uh, we will be having a Q&A at the end of this presentation, so if you want to ask a question, just type into the chat box in Teams. Um, so before we get into this, we're just going to kick off with a couple of slides about who, who, um, who RMS Cloud are. So RMS Cloud is an Australian PMS-based company. Um, we've been in operation for over 35 years. We actually started out as a reservation <coughs> software for the hotel park industry. Um, but over the years, RMS has been transformed uh, via years of development to be suitable for virtually every indoor or outdoor accommodation vertical. There are currently around about 7,000 properties using RMS in 70 countries, um, with offices in Melbourne, Singapore, Dubai, India, uh, the UK, and the US. Uh, some of the ways in which RMS differs from other PMS tech uh, companies are listed on this slide. Um, I, well, I think one of the most important areas is while PMS, while Cloud PMS is a fairly um, a fairly recent development in the technology landscape, RMS has actually been operating in this space since 2009. Uh, what that means is that we're able to offer our customers an incredibly stable uh, and mature cloud solution. Our enterprise database structure uh, architecture is another differentiator, uh, and we've got more details on that on the next slide. One of our other key differentiators is that RMS also houses its development function entirely in Australia, which allows us to be extremely agile when it comes to delivering enhancements that our customers request. As I mentioned just previously, our enterprise database architecture provides customers that have multiple hotels access to some great features that other PMS vendors who claim to be multi-property enterprise systems cannot provide. By having a single unified database, our customers with multiple properties can search availability across multiple properties on one screen, for example, and can move it can even move reservations from one property to another just by dragging and dropping on the availability screen. And they're also able to make single bookings across multiple dates in multiple properties, which which our, our larger customers find uh, find very, very efficient. You can also apply restrictions across clusters of hotels with just a few, few clicks and be able to hold a golden guest record, which shows guest history of stays across the entire estate. Just before we take a look at the um, great dashboards and reports that OTA Insights can offer, we thought it would be a good idea just to cover off on some of the best practices on data collection and keeping your data clean, so that the recommendations that OTA Insights provide are as accurate as possible. <coughs> The first, first point on this, uh, on this list is to automate and enforce data collection. What, this, what does this actually mean? What it could look like is simple as something like having mandatory fields on the reservation screens so that reservations and reception staff are forced to enter the data that you want them to collect when they're making reservations or when they're checking in guests. Other options um, that, we, that we recommend for automating collection of data might be to use something like a guest portal. So RMS users can automate emails to guests before they arrive, which prompts them to pre-register via our, P, our, our guest portal. What this um, asks them to do is complete address details, and it can even take payment from the guests before they arrive at the hotel. Essentially what happens then when the guest arrives at your hotel is all their details are already collected in the PMS. Um, and this assists in making the check-in smoother, but it also makes the da data that you're collecting from your guests more accurate. Uh, I mean, you've probably all arrived at a hotel after a long flight and had to fill out a registration card. Um, it's much easier to have that data already collected than trying to decipher uh, an address that's been scribbled onto a registration card. Some of the feedback that um, I received from our account management team when I was preparing for this webinar um, was loud and clear regarding market segmentation. And this is probably one of the most important areas of, of data collection to get right. The key message was less is more. 
do not have a list of 25 market segments in your in your PMS. What essentially happens there is that in, it becomes inevitable that that the reservation staff will not be able to choose the right market segment. There could be a guest that fits into four or five different market segments if you have a, a market segmentation list that's too too large. So one of the recommendations that our account management team gave us was just to to have a, a short and sharp list of market segments. Perhaps five or six would be a good start. Uh, and these market segments should be very easy to understand and for the reservation staff to, to apply. The third point on this list is to review data regularly. Uh, don't just put in, in place um, standards and, and not review them. RMS has a number of reports that allow you, allow you to slice and dice data, which will then allow you to easily review and audit how data is being recorded by staff. Um, the fourth point on this, uh, on this slide is to utilize um, merge profile functionality. Um, having a clean database of guests is crucial for any accommodation business. Uh, from being able to market to a customer base to be, being able to recognize frequent and lower customers, all of this relies on having accurate data and removing dupl duplicate profiles. Uh, hotels that are using RMS have the option of setting up a regular merge utility that runs during the night audit, and this will merge profiles that fit into certain criteria. For example, if you're um, if you, if you say that a, a two profiles that have the same email address. Uh, if RMS finds that during the night audit, they'll automatically merge those two profiles. There's also an option of being able to um, uh, prompt a user when they're creating a new profile if it finds a, a similar looking profile to merge those profiles during the reservation process. And the last point on this list is, um, I think for anyone who's ever implemented a revenue management system, um, they would have received this advice as much as possible <coughs> The advice is to ensure that reservations are entered on the day that they are received. Uh, I mean, entering a booking five days after it was actually received by the guest really distorts a key statistic, which is your lead time. Uh, if the reservations office are continually leaving a pile of unentered reservations at the close of business, the lead time data you're getting from the system, uh, from, from a system like OTA Insights, um, it, it could be incorrect and, and giving you misleading information. So just five really sort of high level points there. I hope that sort of puts us in, in, in a good stead for, for the next stage of this presentation. And I will now hand over to Amit. Thanks, Stephen. Uh, hi, everyone. So as hoteliers and commercial team leaders, we have multiple different systems that we utilize and pull information from every day. Each of these systems in turn give us a lot of data points and it is critical that we utilize those data points effectively to make sure that in this rapidly changing landscape, we are able to immediately make those uh, key strategies and those decisions that will help us to optimize our performance. Systems that you would be familiar with can take the shape of CRS, PMS, our extranets, et cetera. But at the end of it all, we do want to have something which is gives us a simple, better, and a faster solution. Something that is simple to pull uh, and customize the reports for different users. It gives us better analytics in terms of the data analysis and the usage to effectively strategize and give us not only the big picture, but also an ability to drill down into its most granular form. And again, a system which helps us to make decisions immediately with just a few clicks of the mouse as well. About OT Insight, so a bit of background again about uh, who we are at OT Insight. Uh, we've been in the market for about 10 plus years. Uh, OT Insight supports uh, commercial teams comprising revenue, distribution, sales, and market marketing. Uh, and we help them with decision making. We work with uh, independent hotels as well as uh, local chains, uh, holiday parks, uh, global chains as well uh, across the globe. We are also humbled to uh, currently work with over 55,000 hotels and very fortunate to work uh, across multiple regions. And one of our premises is that our solutions are built based on customer feedback. Being a global company and working with so many properties in all the continents gives us the advantage that we really receive a lot of feedback of actually what is happening in the industry per continent on a global level as well. 
And this in turn helps us to understand the challenges in those specific markets and how our customer booking behavior is actually changing today as well. So Revenue Insight is our uh, business intelligence tool. Uh, it is our BI dashboard, which enables hotel users to visualize and review their revenue management KPIs, consolidate multiple different indicators, such as uh, rate codes, uh, market segmentation, room types. Uh, you can do day of week analysis so that we can together make better and faster decisions to support performance. The system also then allows you to combine some of our other pro product offerings like rate insight, parity insight, or market insight to allow you to make those smart revenue pricing and ultimate distribution decisions as well. <clears throat> How can we leverage our data? It's, it's important that we are able to look at some key KPIs and performance indicators across the board, analyze that effectively, and then make a very comprehensive uh, strategic decision. Some of the KPIs that are currently available in terms of the data points that come through with our partnership through RMS Cloud onto the OT Inside Revenue Inside dashboard is critical. Uh, and the RI dashboard essentially supports length of stay. How many room nights does each of the channels, for example, book at an average? Which day of the week is the business coming to you or the reservation hitting your uh, property management system? Is it coming on a day of week? Is it coming on a weekend? Are your weekends busy? Uh, where is this booking coming from? And which are your new feeder markets uh, given a post-COVID environment as well? Because then ultimately using that data, you can then look at promotional strategies. You can look at some uh, point of sale uh, campaigns itself so that, so that you can draw out those feeder markets at your hotel as well. And then again, for holiday parks and for some of our hotels where we have multiple different room types, it also allows you to see what is the difference from one room type to the other, where do we essentially need to contract, and how far can we basically look at from a lead time perspective. Because pre-COVID and post-COVID, our lead times are completely different. And we don't know where that new guest is coming from, how many nights is he staying, and when is he going to start working. So your lead time patterns can drastically change as we move along in the next uh, coming months in our markets as well. So let's take a look at this slide as well. And I'll, I'll flick through and show you the uh, Revenue Inside dashboard uh, in a live environment. When you look at uh, the live dashboard, you can see that uh, without logging in, uh, you have a very neatly laid out Revenue Inside dashboard. And uh, the data comes through directly from your RMS Cloud PMS. It is optimized nightly, uh, and you have, first and foremost, it allows you to see the current month and how are you comparing versus the previous, uh, previous year. You can look at it uh, in comparison to historical for over three years, uh, historic, and you can look at comparison in terms of versus yesterday versus last year, or even going back to 2018 and 2019. Because I know very many hoteliers may want to typically wipe out 2020 and 2021 from a comparison perspective and use, very often hoteliers are now using 2019 as base here. And as business is getting more and more established, we are seeing that many of our markets and many of our hotels are already ahead of the 2019 business levels. So you can then compare versus same day of week last year, uh, previous period, or even go into the granularity of seeing how am I comparing this Christmas versus last year's Christmas or versus 2019 Christmas as well. You also are able to look at your uh, current uh, performance for the month of November that we are on, or look at the future 12 months as well. And you can, with just a few clicks of the button, you can look at business uh, on the books or your holdings for the current quarter, the next 90 days, your year to date performance. And these are leaders that really help you to understand your holdings and your forward facing pattern, as well as your uh, historical uh, performance, so that it then helps you to make those optimal decisions as well. As you move further down, you can see it first starts with our key KPIs. And these are, you know, in terms of your occupancy, you can look at room nights, you can also look at uh, your average daily rate both split by transient and groups. And ultimately, you can look at your room's revenue as well as your ref bar. And you can see as we click the, the entire dashboard pivots to basically allow you to see your stay dates, 
for the entire month and see how are you comparing versus this reference period as well. If you move your cursor across any of these uh, filters, you will not only see your business in the books, but also see what has been the cancellation factor as well. So you have the option to look at both cancellations as well as bookings as well. You also are able to select favorites. And this is really critical for you know, our properties when we are looking at our end of month reporting, when we are looking at saving favorites and wanting to monitor some specific promotions or campaigns that we are running at a regional or a unit level. And then most importantly, as, as revenue managers, as general managers as well, we want to look at how is the pickup and the pace happening as well versus last year or versus our first period. So you can see it gives you a clear visualization of your pace for the historical 12 months. It also then allows you to map your pace year and year to see how will you end the month, uh, pick up and pace remaining the same as your reference field. And then most importantly, the holy grail is your pickup. So it looks at how much business have you picked up yesterday, three, seven or 14 days ago. You can easily export each of these into Excel. Uh, you can schedule reports as well. Uh, and you can you can kind of pull out a, da a, a data dump at any point in time in PDF or in CSV format so that you can then look at a data link as well. Where magic really happens is your breakdown. So we have over uh, 10 to 12 different breakdowns where it allows you to go into that granularity of your business with data coming from your RMS Cloud PMS to look at your major market segments first and foremost, your minor market segments, and then right down to the sub-market segments as well. And you can, you can uh, combine these to basically look at, uh, you know, where is, which are the different online market segments, your offline market segments, how is my entire leisure segment doing, for example. Uh, where it's also beneficial specifically for our sales and marketing teams is uh, if the sales team has access to Revenue Insight, uh, they are able to pull their sales trackers, they are able to, look at their uh, company materializations at any point in time. You have uh, breakdowns such as room type, uh, feeder market data, or your guest country data, which is really relevant and useful for not only our hotel level, but also our regional level marketing teams to look at those promotions and those campaigns. And going further down, it allows you to look at your length of stay, your booking uh, windows, as well as your source and layer feed patterns as well. All in all, <coughs> Revenue Insight dashboard with just a few clicks, you are in a, in a driver's seat to basically see what you need to do to optimize your performance. Where are the shortfalls? Where are the peaks? And how can you mitigate those variances? Uh, one important thing as an enhancement that we've also added is that the system allows you to upload your uh, budgets and your forecasts as well. So you have an additional comparative layer to look at your performance versus not only last year, but also versus your budgets and your forecast. Going back to our uh, presentation. Like Stephen said, please, if there are any questions, uh, please feel free to uh, drop them in the chat box and we'll, uh, we'll address this at the end of the presentation. So as commercial leaders, uh, you know, it's important that uh, we need to start strategizing instead of analyzing. And it's also important that uh, we are able to monitor and measure the KPIs and an internal business performance very clearly. So what do we mean by measuring KPIs? Like we rightly saw on the live environment, it's really critical that we understand your key business drivers. And in any hotel or in any holiday park environment, your key KPIs start from, you know, what is the occupancy? What is the room nice that we've done? what's the re uh, revenue and those revenues are also really important ancillary revenue is again really important it's also really critical that we are able to analyze your uh, room nights adr and revenue together with your stay dates so that you can clearly track which are your shoulder dates which are your peak days and how can you drive an optimal rate strategy to be able to you know monitor and and uh, drive your performance better as well Let's also take a deep dive into understanding how can you strategize instead of analyze. So when you look at uh, some of the strategies instead of analysis, pickup is an important KPI that is reviewed and monitored by all stakeholders. So the pickup uh, that we have had uh, versus yesterday is really an important KPI that is not only looked by revenue managers every day, but also by the GM and the sales managers. 
And it's important to also kind of understand that what was booked yesterday or in the last uh, three days is before we change our pricing strategy, it's important to see where that business has come from. So it's, uh, say for example, your pickup has actually, uh, you've had over a hundred rooms that have picked, a hundred room rides that have picked up. It's critical to see which segment is that pickup coming from, because if that pickup is coming from a, from a segment which where you've given static rates, for example, you've given to a wholesaler, or it's coming from a last minute crew layover, then it does not necessarily warrant us to change our pricing strategy, because if we change our pricing strategy and change our rates up, on the online segment and on our brand, sometimes we will basically, uh, you know, minimize the kind of pickup that would otherwise come. So we won't be kind of, uh, we'll be displacing the room nights that would otherwise come up across the online segments rather than, rather than getting them through by changing it because the pickup has largely come from a static segment. Equally, it's also important to see which days is that pickup coming from and which segments. So if you are getting pickup from a very highly discounted, uh, lower segments, such as you know a, uh, something which is where you you had a promotion that you're running in the hotel uh, across an online OTA, and you've given a very heavy discount, very tactical heavy discount. It's also important to see that it's not your your hotel is not really filling up too cheap, and you're able to immediately uh, put in place some uh, clear restrictions or length of stay controls so that you're getting the pickup at the right price point that you want, and it's filling your hotel on the right uh, room type levels as well. <clears throat> Going further on, it's also important to see that once you have implemented your commercial strategy with Revenue Inside, you can immediately test uh, the effectiveness and the performance of your promotions and the offers. So you're also able to see what's working and what isn't, because as we see here, uh, it gives you analysis of your market segmentation, your rate codes, your guest country, and your booking window. And that is really critical because if there is a particular strategy which is not working, then you know where else you can focus on and double down onto the strategy. And if, uh, if not, then you can focus your attention into another direction. This is also really makes the most of your marketing budgets because as we move outside of COVID, your marketing dollars need to uh, you know, be strategically spent so that you can get the most optimum positive ROI from there. So with constrained resources at present and changeable market conditions, this then enables us to be agile and pivot the strategy very quickly. And that's where the nimbleness of the revenue inside dashboard comes into play as well. Well, last focus that I didn't want to kind of uh, allude to is the value of the distribution channels. And this is really important because as hoteliers, we, we often look at, uh, you know, the cost of acquisition rather than the value of uh, a particular online channel. So we have looked at your pricing strategy. You've also been able to analyze where you need to optimize your performance uh, in which segment or which length of stay or which feeder market. And then when it comes down to distributing your rooms and your performance, it's important to analyze that channel performance. So I've taken an example here where you look at uh, at, at first glance, when you see two OTAs and you're comparing OTA 1 and OTA 2, you will see that OTA 1 charges us a 10% commission, whereas OTA 2 is charging us a 20% commission. That is looking at just a simple cost of acquisition. But it's important to look at a deeper analysis of your distribution channel. And when you take a deep dive into OTA 1, we can see that OTA 1, for example, would only give us business, uh, domestic business, it's uh, potentially giving you business on days that are, you know, you would have a very high corporate demand or it's giving you business on a weekday where traditionally you would always be filling in your rooms at much higher rates. And also you can see that OTA1 in this example is only giving you business on the length of stay one. So in comparison, OTA2, uh, while it's charging 20%, commission, it's business that is coming to you from international business segments, so across other, uh, outside of your main country, where you otherwise would not be spending marketing dollars on, or you would, you because of the exposure that OTA2 was giving you, you're able to kind of get business from other uh, international visitors 
who are wanting to come and also not only look at your room spend, but also looking at that incremental spend or your ancillary revenue in areas such as spa, your food and beverage outlets, et cetera. So the, the guests perhaps coming in from the international markets would also be less demanding. Uh, they are giving you business potentially across low demand days uh, or softer periods. And at the same time, they're not only giving you one night length of stay, but they are in fact driving a longer length of stay for up to four plus nights as well. So it's important then to do that deep dive analysis and see that is in the long term, where am I getting true value through my distribution? Is it OTA1 or OTA2? And that's really critical. That's the value of your distribution channel as well. So the key takeaways uh, from today, uh, one is that competition uh, is, is getting more fierce than ever. And it's important to understand what the market is doing, especially from a pricing and a promotion perspective. Uh, it's getting very, very dynamic. Uh, take a data-driven approach to decisions. Uh, there is multiple different data points uh, that are coming from your property management system. And as Sita said, you know, it's important to look at the market segmentation, look at your profiles, and you know, it's great that RMS automatically does, does that duplication of profiles that are merged overnight. But we need to make sure that the data-driven approach allows you to take advantage of your revenue opportunities much more ahead before competition so that you can capture the demand before and you can basically not only pick up on your performance internally, but also from a market perspective. Monitor disparity and control your distribution mix. And this is really critical. If one particular distribution channel is not working, immediately stem that and, and utilize the other distribution channels as well very clearly because you are in control with the level of data that you are able to see and visualize on, on the BI tool as well. And finally, uh, measure and analyze the performance. So this is this is a kind of constant uh, cycle. We need to con continuously measure and analyze the performance, which segment, which promotion has worked well for us, which one can we put on the shelf so that we can repeat that in the months ahead and into next year as well. Finally, as, as we are in the end of the year almost, we'd like to basically extend uh, an end of year offer. Uh, so if you can scan us here, uh, we would like you to avail uh, and see if Revenue Insight is really the right solution. Uh, you can leverage this free of charge until the end of this year. There are terms and conditions that apply, but if you are able to uh, scan and uh, we receive your inquiries, there uh, we'd be able to organize a demo for you. Uh, and if you can sign up and onboard before the end of uh, this month, so by November 30th, we, are, we do have an offer where we can delay the uh, billing until January 2023. We'll take any questions uh, at this time. Uh, so I'll pause here and we, Stephen and myself, will just take questions on the chat box. Yep, great. Uh, thanks for that, Amit. So yeah, there's, there's a couple of questions that have come through. Uh, Excellent. This, this one, it says, how long does the integration setup process take? <coughs> And would it have any implications to the hotel operations? I, I think from RMS side, um, you don't have to start collecting more information than you already do. It, it basically is just the standard information that you would um, you would normally be taking when you when you're entering reservations. Have you got any other no. comments? On that? Yeah, that's a great question. And uh, as far as uh, you know, like we rightly mentioned. Uh, We've got a solid partnership with RMS Cloud. So uh, our integration with RMS Cloud is basically uh, seamless. Uh, in terms of the uh, process of uh, making active the Revenue Inside dashboard, uh, it would take about seven, uh, seven days because we'd like to kind of, once the integration is completed, we validate the data on our end uh, so that it's as accurate as possible. And then we reflect it and you, know, you get the login details. There is no limit in terms of how many users would like to access and, and use that dashboard. At the same time, uh, the next one was, would there be any implications to hotel operations? That's a great one. We make sure that there is no downtime at the hotels and we work together because it is cloud-based. It's, it's seamless, so there is absolutely no downtime where your front office or your checkouts and check-in patterns are impacted because of that integration happening at the back end. So I hope that answers that. Cool. Okay, next. If I am a commercial leader with multiple properties in my portfolio, would I be able to see insights from all properties or just independent ones? 
fantastic question again. So uh, uh, the way our integration with RMS works is that uh, if you are a unit level user, uh, you are able to see your own revenue inside dashboard. But we do realize that there are multi-property users, uh, cluster hotel users as well, and at the same time, some who would be using at regional and corporate levels as well. So we have the dashboard view, and then we have a multi-property view, so that at a, at a very holistic or a group level, you can see the and monitor your breakdowns as well as your KPIs for the entire portfolio and all the properties uh, across the board as well. Excellent. Um, I think this one was actually answered in the in the in the uh, slides but how often is the data updated i think you said it was nightly right yes yeah, so we look at uh, the optimization happens every night and we try and schedule that or we do schedule it after your night audit as well as if you're let's say you're using a revenue management system etc then we look at scheduling it after that so that your data that you see visualized next morning is as accurate as possible as the night before Okay, and the next one says, what data does RMS collect? I think I mentioned earlier um, that the integration really only takes information that you're already um, <coughs> entering into, into RMS. So there's no changes to any of your processes. Just enter the reservations as you normally do. Um, and, and that information is sent on to OTA Insights. Excellent. Um, yep, the next question says, what is the most overlooked statistic and what opportunity are most of your customers missing? Um, so I actually went to our account management team and got some feedback from them on this. Uh, one of the things they mentioned is that, that, and I won't say most of the customers, but uh, some of our customers, um, they they tend to overlook um, the overbooking or the overbooking, but they're not sort of analyzing the no-shows and the cancellations. Um, and they're not doing it by room type either. So essentially what happens is they won't overbook the lead in room type and they get a whole heap of no shows and they and they don't overbook the hotel. So they, they, they end up not filling the hotel. So that was kind of one of the, um, the, the sort of things that our account management team sees quite often when they're engaging with our customers is just to really sort of analyze your no show rate um, and cancellations and when those cancellations are coming in and develop an overbooking strategy around that. Of course, if you have a revenue management software, that, that does it all for you. But um, if you're doing it manually, yeah. those, are, those are statistics that you want to keep an eye on. Yeah, absolutely. And exactly what Stephen pointed out and you know what we just saw on that live environment. So revenue inside, you are able to look at uh, you know, a filter which you can clearly see what is your bookings and what is your cancellation? Because during the COVID period, this was a this was a really important uh, KPI uh, because we wanted to see are we net positive or net negative uh, with the number of bookings and the number of cancellations that are happening month on month. One important thing from our uh, point of view that we are also seeing at OT Insight is because we have the live demand tool, which is Market Insight as well. So as demand is ever changing and it's evolving across the next uh, 12 months. We are seeing that uh, an opportunity uh, for most customers that they miss out is the length of stay. So, you know, we're so uh, ingrained on looking at just the one night length of stay, but we are missing out opportunity to see how can we optimize on that multiple nights length of stay. Uh, and that's where marketing promotions come into play so that you can look at that longer lead time. You can fill in your shoulder dates uh, and, and those KPIs are really critical uh, as business uh, keeps uh, changing and we get more uh, Optic with demand as well. Very good. Uh, next question is says, from your experience, who from the commercial team uses or owns the analyzing of data? And what frequency do they share these <coughs> insights with other commercial teams? I'll throw that one to you, I mean. Yeah. It's it's a great one. So being an ex revenue manager, I I can say from my days wearing the revenue managers now that you know uh, when we used to have our commercial calls or our forecast meetings, we used to spend the better part of the morning literally pulling reports from multiple different systems, uh, putting those comments and justifications. But I think the beauty, uh, personally, with Revenue Insight is that you know everyone in the team, uh, and right now, given our commercial team, whether it's a GM, the revenue manager, the sales, the marketing, even the F&B manager or the FOM, Everyone is basically part of the commercial team and everyone has access to Revenue Insight. 
potentially as users, and they can all make the they can all make their own commercial uh, decisions. So, analysis of the data, uh, you know, uh, how often do they need to use it? I think the data is all there. If it just needs to be visualized and it just needs to be reviewed with the right filters, so that you can, you know, if you have a commercial meeting, for example, with just a few clicks, you can see. What do I need to put in place as far as the tactical promotion for the next three months? If my group segment is uh, having a shortfall uh, or I'm losing out on a particular OTA, how can I look at a last minute promotion so that I can I can drive uh, a brand.com promotion or I can I can reach out to my uh, you know my my leisure partner and say that okay let's do a last minute promotion so that I fill in my rooms at the right price point. So. Uh, analysis of data and the frequency, I think it's not no more required to look at it every day for an X amount of time in the morning, but it's just available. So uh, that's that's the power of, uh, you know, having data at your fingertips as well. Yeah. Um, and we've got one more question here. Uh, as companies that work with such data, would you have any insights to share with us on which KPIs or data points we should be analysing post-COVID? That would enable us to get ahead of the curve. Um, yeah, it's an interesting one because I, I think probably post COVID we've almost <coughs> returned to some fairly normal business um, business conditions. I think if that question had been asked maybe six months ago, the types of things that I would have suggested would be looking at which, um, if you're a corporate hotel, you know, looking at which companies <coughs> have started to travel again. Uh, that that may still be relevant, um, but I, I feel like corporate travel has kind of really sort of got back to back to normal domestically in Australia anyway. Um, and then the other thing would be just to kind of you know if you if leisure and you rely on international just to you know sort of monitor your um your, your nationality statistics, your country statistics to see which countries are starting to um to, to travel again. But yeah, it's I, I don't know if you've got anything to add to that. I mean, it feels like that question might yeah. be just a little bit old. Yeah, no, it's uh, so one of the things is obviously market segments uh, because uh, you know we all know uh, corporate demand has has slowed down a lot, uh, but again there is corporates that are coming back uh, and they're coming back uh, slowly, but they are definitely there's there's positive signs of corporates returning. So I would pers uh, I would personally say that you know have a look at your corporate segment because there is a lot of dilution that's happening so if you do if you do have a dedicated corporate market segment or corporate trade codes that you've built also try and review uh, those corporate companies and corporate materialization because they would be booking through OTAs or online segments but at the same time they're coming in from the companies as well so it's I, I, red codes and market segmentation is, is I think two uh, key KPIs that I would I would definitely look at a deep dive one other thing is also, uh, you know, there was a strategy uh, until not not so many months ago where we were drowning volume because we wanted bombs on bed, and we were not looking at rate. And now in a post-COVID environment, we we need to slowly start getting more confident of what we are selling. So it's important that we are looking at those constrained nights and really driving our rate strategy over those constrained nights. Uh, and then start looking at your uh, what is the amount of discounted rates that you have, the rate codes that you have, and which room types are you giving those discounted rates to. You know, Stephen mentioned about the upgrades earlier in the presentation as well. So we need to avoid upgrades uh, so that we are saving those premium room types and running rate on those premium room types. So rate code, uh, market segmentation, and your uh, your your room types basically these are the three uh, these are the three that I would definitely uh, vouch for. Perfect, and that's uh, that's the last question. So that brings us to the end of um, uh, of this joint webinar. Thank you everyone for for your time, and um, look forward to seeing you around. Thank you so much. It was it was lovely, uh, and thanks for the questions. Pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. Bye bye.